A friend of mine called and he has a problem. His family has outgrown their dining room table and he asked me if I could help Unwreck It Ron style. start this video off by saying I am not a professional carpenter I'm not a professional woodworker I'm a professional get it done if that's a word but this table is going to be nine foot long and 31 and a half inches wide and it's gonna have a matching bench with it and you may ask why, Ron why are you making those out of uh, 2 by 12 pine and not something like walnut or um, oak or some expensive hardwood well, exactly that reason, it's expensive. So I was trying to keep this table as cheap, but have a nice finish that uh, resembles a hardwood finish. The shelf she has in her house now, uh, it's an open shelf in her, in, her, in her kitchen and dining area, is two by 12 pine that's been stained with a, a black walnut looking uh, finish. So the table and the bench that goes with it is gonna match that. Uh, I'm gonna do the best that I can to, to turn out a great product for them. Uh, I have already jointed these boards. Jointing is giving it a straight edge so that the top has a better glue uh, surface to glue together. If all the, all the pieces are parallel, they glue together better. I'm gonna try to build this without any fasteners. It's all gonna be dowels and, and biscuits. So it needs to have that nice straight edge on it. Uh, my jointer was not big enough for this chore. I did have some help. That's why I went ahead and jumped on trying to, to joint these while I had my help here. And so I wound up having to get the first one as straight as I could with a jointer and a sander and a string and a straight edge and everything I could to get it really straight. And I used it and my router to, to joint the sides on the other two uh, 10 foot boards that I have. The eight foot boards for the rest of the build, they won't be as bad. And I could use the same process and I may do that. Uh, so stick with me as we build this table. We'll see how it turns out. I'm excited. It's been a challenge for me to, to put my skills to a test for myself. So hopefully it turns out great. So I've only got to joint one side of these and then I can, I can square up or parallel the other side through my table saw. Right now I'm just trimming off some of the excess on the end. This table is only nine foot long. These are 10 foot boards. So I'm going to trim off a little bit on each end so that it will fit uh, or so that it'll be a little bit more manageable for me and also I had a little bit of chatter on the end of one of them, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. I'll make my final cut once the table is assembled. Uh, but for now, cut these off freehand with the circular saw. And now, before I Send these through the table saw, keeping the, the edge that I just cut, the straight edge that I just cut, 
against my fence to parallel the other side and cut it to the width that I need, which is uh, 10 and a half inches. Make sure I check my saw. This is a job site table saw that I've just affixed to my work table. So I'll make sure that my blade is actually perfectly parallel with my uh, the face of my table saw. I don't have to make any kind of adjustments. And it looks great. My sides uh, jointed. I got it pulled up here, got it measured, looks great. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and mark every 12 inches to put a biscuit in. These boards are a little bit uh, bowed, so putting those biscuits in is going to help pull everything up even. And then I can glue it up. I may have to make some extra clamps. I've only got two clamps that are long enough, but I'll come up with something to be able to clamp all of this together. So I'd like to get my top glued up and finished and set out of the way. If I ever make a table this big or any bigger, I'm probably going to approach Mandy about building a bigger shop because, as you can see, I'm running out of room pretty quick. So I'm going to get started on marking these up and then work through the process of uh, biscuit joining these, these uh, the top boards. Alright, so for those of you that don't know what a biscuit joiner is, Essentially, it's a tool that cuts out uh, like a half moon shape in the edge of the board in order to be able to line up the next board. I don't have a, a I don't have a true enough uh, edge or board and able to just glue, you know, long grain to long grain and have a good edge. So I'm going to put these biscuits in. So this goes on here. You set the depth on it. You plunge it in there. Plunges out a hole. And then you put these biscuits. Uh, these are not delicious. They're made out of wood, so they're not the ones that you're going to eat. But they go and they glue them in, and, and you'll have a plunge cut on both pieces of, of wood, and it'll help it line everything up and make it a little bit stronger. So I've got a bunch of these to cut. Then I'll get it back over there on my makeshift uh, work table, try to get it put together, clamped in. I may just do two boards at one time, glue them up, um, let that dry, and then come back tomorrow and, and glue the third board on just to make it a little easier to manage, but lots of biscuits to cut. All right, because these are two by 12s and I'm out it by myself, Built, my, built a little jig that I can stand those up uh, on their side so they don't have any glue squeezing out the bottom, have a better fit, and I can also clamp it. So this is just a scrap uh, two by 10 that I had uh, that I screwed onto this two by four. So I'm gonna clamp my outside board to that, glue my biscuits in, put a line of glue on the edge, set the top one down there, get it all lined up, and then clamp it down. And then I'll lay it flat. And then because I don't want my panels being glued to, to these uh, two by 12s that I've got on this sawhorses, I'm going to wrap them in Christmas paper. Now, what I'm gonna do is roll some of this out, tape it down, because if it, the glue does get stuck to this, I can just peel it off and then sand it out. I don't have to worry about being stuck to one of those two by 12s.
Um, probably shouldn't have tackled this before I get some more of these long clamps. I might stop by tomorrow before I put that other piece on there. This piece was bowed pretty good, had a, had a good cup in it. Um, so I had to use these four by fours to pull that down until the glue dries. Uh, so that, that worked out real good. It's pretty flat now. Gonna have some sanding to do. I took a sponge and wiped down the glue as much as I could because uh, that'll just help the stain when I go to stain it. Uh, the stain won't stick to the glue. Now, one thing I did want to point out is if you're gonna build a tabletop out of plank, you know, plank tabletop, it's always best to alternate grains. Like this is a frowny face. This is a smiley face. The other one will be a frowny face. And that'll help keep your table from the edges turning up or turning down. All right, so looking at my drawing, this is the tabletop from the side. This is a leg. This is a leg. These legs are gonna be, you know, two two by 12s together. They're gonna be 21 inches wide. I'm gonna have to cut those down to 10 and a half as well. But what I've gotta figure out is how to make this arched piece that keeps the legs from racking and supports this top in the middle. So I may have to build a jig to be able to use my router to cut that kind of half circle out. There's also gonna be a half circle or arch on the bottom of the legs that match this. And then this bench that goes under it is gonna have a matching arch under it. So I think if I can get this one figured out, then I can use it as a template to router out this and maybe even this, this might be a little different angle. But, and the same thing on the, the side of the bench. So that's what it's gonna look like anyways, in my mind. Uh, It took a little while, but I figured out how to jaunt to create this giant. Basically, it's a circle jig. See that? So it's just centered. Uh, took this piece of MDF, scrap MDF, cut it out around the router, and I'll be able to track it all the way down the cut to the corners. Cut out. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna use a quarter inch bit. Uh, cut just a just enough to where I can jigsaw out uh, Just outside of the cut and then I'll come back with a flush trim bit and finish it up, but Like I said before, I think this is the only time I'm gonna have to use this jig uh, the rest of the, the cuts I'll just use this one if it turns out good. I'll just use it to as a template for the rest of them. So fingers crossed this works and doesn't fly apart Wow, that didn't turn out half bad for being the only the third time I've ever used a router. But I've watched lots of YouTube videos on it. So had a little bit of edge chatter here. Still learning how to use the thing. It would have been a lot better if I'd have had a, a, a bottom flush trim bit. I wouldn't have had to put that other piece uh, two by 10 under it so it wouldn't tear out as I cut through the bottom of it. But I like it now. I can use this to cut the, the rest of the pieces that I want to match this. I couldn't help myself. Like any good builder, I had to see what it's gonna look like. And man, that's gonna look awesome. I think this, of course this leg is just, it's gonna be twice as wide as that. And it's all gonna be dowel, dowel pinned in there, but I think that's gonna look great. Stained black walnut, yeah.
All right, guys, so I'm going to end this video here. It's, it's a big project, so it's probably going to be a very long uh, video total. So I'm going to break it up into series. Please, with the progress so far, stay tuned uh, for the, for the follow-up videos when we complete the table and deliver it. Real excited about this one. So stay tuned. If you like it, hit the like button, subscribe. Until next time, uh, build something.